Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to make some cards. We are going to use a couple stamp sets that come with dies that are very similar. So I was going to do these, this and these as separate videos, but I'm like, ah, they all use very similar products so and similar techniques, so I thought we'd do it all together. I was inspired by this card that was sent to me from Lisa from Local King Rubber Stamp, and she also sent me these two uh, stamp and die sets as a present. And she makes the prettiest cards, and she makes such fast cards, and man, I needed a win. I needed some fast cards. I just wanted to make something pretty and feel like I was putting my supplies to good use. And I'm going to show you the techniques here, but you're going to see that you can do these with other stamps if you don't have these stamps and die sets. If you've got some butterflies or birds and flowers, you can see Lisa cut hers apart here so that, um, and she just used regular circle dies to make the windows. You know, you could do that with what you have at home. You need a background stamp. I mean, simple stuff. You can adapt it to what you already have. If you like these, I have a coupon code for 20% off. The Anything at Local King Rubber Stamps, your whole order. So if you are inspired and want these particular products, you can get them. But otherwise, you can use what you have. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a, um, a window with vellum behind it. And the way these cut out, these cut out and they have a, they attach to your front panel. So you can cut them right out of the front of your cardstock if you want to. And you don't even have to um, layer things up if you want, or I'll show you how to detach them. Then we've got this one where I've just layered stuff up. I just did a layering panel, then I decorated the inside with the leftover paper from some envelopes. So remember, make your envelopes and save the scraps to decorate your cards. And then again, this is a very similar technique just done with the other stamps, and I left the inside simple. You could put a post-it note in there if you want the card to be reusable. So without further ado, uh, we're going to get into the project. All you need, like I said, is either, um, if you want these, you can use these, but if you don't want these, get a, like a, some birds or butterflies and flowers and uh, that will be totally fine. And then some either, obviously these dies cut them out, but you could use any sort of nesting dies that you have, any sort of frame dies, and like a text background stamp. And I used a cloud background stamp, but a stencil would also work really well for doing your backgrounds there. Honestly, have fun. Be creative because like I have stamps that are just weird textures that if I did it in blue on blue, it's gonna look cloudy. So be creative. And then some water-based markers. These are local kings. They're very juicy and meant for coloring on stamps. But if you have Tombos, if you have mementos, if you have uh, Crayolas might even work. They might beat up a little bit. You might need to let them dry and go over them again. But um, yeah, or use an ink pad. I, you do you, do whatever you wanna do. And let's get to it. Cause these are fun. I think they're really elegant looking and and um, they're pretty. They're pretty and they're easy and fast. So let's do it. I'm starting off with this stamp that has a beautiful rose and a couple butterflies with a uh, oval frame and I'm putting it onto a clear stamp block. Now I'm going to use one of my favorite techniques and I love this technique for beginners because it's pretty affordable. You don't need to have a bunch of ink pads. All you need to have is some water-based markers. These markers are from Local King Rubber Stamp and they're very juicy. They're designed for this, but any water-based markers you have should work pretty well for this technique. Now this is gonna work better on a rubber stamp versus a clear stamp because it's a little bit grabbier. But if you have clear stamps, uh, if it's a photopolymer stamp, if you smell it, it'll have like a little bit of a sweet smell. It'll work all right for that. And if you have a silicone stamp, which a lot of the budget stamps are, it won't work quite as well. But if you have that kind of stamp and your ink is not sticking, you can run an eraser, like rub it with a pencil eraser. Or if that doesn't work, you can very gently scuff it with a fine emery board. Of course, that does run a risk of damaging your stamp, but if your stamp's not stamping well, it's really not much of a risk. But I find with rubber stamps, this technique is kind of a no-fail one. You want to start with your lighter colors first, and the reason for that is so you don't dirty up your markers, basically. So I'll do like yellows and peaches and pinks, and then I'll move over to oranges and reds and, you know, get darker and darker and darker. So, um, I just minimize the risk of dirtying up my, my markers. Now, if your markers do get contaminated, all you have to do is scribble them on a scrap of paper. And even if the nib stains, it's gonna be fine. The ink is gonna come out the color that you intend. I left this portion in real time because I just wanted to make sure you were aware of how long this takes. It is gonna take longer than just using ink pads to ink up your stamp, so keep that in mind. It is a fairly quick technique, but it's not as quick as grabbing your ink pads. Another thing you could do here, if you have mini ink pads like the Memento Dewdrops, you could go in and color the image that way. Now there's a couple different camps to how you wanna do this. I usually go in and I'm fairly specific with my colors, like I'll have my leaves be green, my flowers 
flowers be the flower colors and the butterflies be the butterfly colors and the frame maybe be a contrasting color and so on and so forth. You could also go just with random patches of color and that looks really great too. In fact, when I see Lisa, the owner of Local King Rubber Stamps demo at her booths at uh, stamp conventions, she is completely random and it always looks fantastic. So she could show you how to make some real quick cards on her YouTube channel if you wanna check that out. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I'm not super pristine with my coloring, but I'm not super random either. And that is my style and that works for me. As you explore your card making supplies and you grow on your card making journey, you are gonna develop your style. But you're only gonna develop your style if you use the stamps that you like, the products that you like, the papers that you like, that's how you're gonna develop your style and that's how you're really gonna be satisfied with this hobby. It's not following my style, it's not following anybody else's style, it's using what you like and doing it the way you like to do it. And that's, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. And it's the right way. If it's the way you like it, that's the right way for you. I don't want you to think that there's only one right way or wrong way to do it. Uh, you want to make sure you do get good coverage on these stamps. So more is better in this case when you're coloring. You want to make sure you got every bit of rubber colored because it's going to make it look better when you stamp it. Now images like this are what we call shadow stamps. They are when you have more rubber versus outline. So if you could, you could just even stamp this with a solid color and it's going to look great because you have the structure of having all those solid blocks of rubber that's going to that's going to transfer. If you had more of an outline stamp, this is not going to work as well for you. You can certainly color an outline stamp with your markers and you can be specific with colors and then you could go and watercolor it or, or then color it in with markers after you've stamped it and that would give you what's called a no line technique where it would look like you just kind of freehanded it and that's really a cool look as well. So now I've got my cardstock here. I'm going to give this a spray with a fine mist spray bottle of water. You can pick those up on Amazon. They're sold for like hairdressers and stuff or you can breathe on the stamp. The reason you need to do this is because it takes you a long time to color things in with the markers. So by the time you're putting that last color down, the first colors that you originally colored on the rubber will have dried. So you need to re-moisten it. So whether you want to breathe heavy on the stamp or you want to mist it with a water bottle, it's up to you. I find misting it with a water bottle gives me more of a loose watercolor look and breathing on it with my hot air, my breath, it just gives me a little bit more of a stamped look. So it just depends depends on what you like. Now here I stamped it again to see what sort of second generation ghost print I could get and it was light, it was pretty and maybe not strong enough for a focal point but I can always use it as a decoration later. Now I'm going to do the same exact technique with this stamp which is a hummingbird and a fuchsia stamp and it's really pretty but I, same thing. This time though, to do my second impression, I'm gonna recolor the image. I'm not gonna wash it. I'm just gonna kind of be careful to redo the same colors on top of where I already had them so I don't contaminate my stamps. But by doing that first test, I realized uh, I really want a little more color on that second impression so I can do another focal point card. It does take a little time to do this direct to rubber coloring, so I wanna make sure that, my, um, that I get the most for my creative time, money, I guess, the most of my money, the most of my time, most of my, well, you know what I mean. Uh, so I decided I would just go ahead and recolor the whole thing. But that's completely up to you. You'll figure out what looks you like best, and that's what you'll do, and that's how we grow. And I'm just gonna give myself time to let that ink transfer from the rubber to the paper, and that's how you do that. So these are really easy to line up the matching dies if you have the matching dies. I'll just usually put my head directly over my die and make sure that I'm seeing what I should be seeing through the holes and that's all I, That's all you do. You may wanna tape this down to your paper though because sometimes, especially if you have an older machine like I do, you won't get a cut all the way through and you'll need to run it through again. So when I flip this over, you're gonna see that some areas didn't cut. So I can just go and, and zip that through again and be all fine. If you wanna be sure, just tape it. Now, one thing I recommend doing is uh, having some just cardstock scraps handy that you can put either under or, or uh, over your die, then that just gives you a little more pressure. It's called shimming, and sometimes you need to do it when you have a really intricate die. But here you can see uh, removing the center is really easy, and then these frames are designed to connect to the card base in case you don't want to cut out the whole thing and you want to have like a window card and you want to just color on the base of your cardstock of your like folded card. So I like that there's that option, but if you want to have it like a frame, you'll just need to go in with your scissors 
and snip those contact points. It's not a big deal, but I wanted to show you so when you cut this out at home, if you have this die, you're not like, why Why didn't it come apart? That's why. So you have the option of cutting it out and using it as its own focal point, or you can use it as a window in your card base. And of course, if you don't have these supplies, you can use your um, nesting dies or any circle cutter or oval cutter you have to cut into your card base. So honestly, do whatever you want to do. So with this card, we're going to keep it fairly simple. What I did was I'm um, using a green A2 card base, and then I cut a mat out of a slightly different green color. It's pretty close, but it's just slightly different. And I'm going to glue our focal point onto the mat. So these dies do come with a matting layer, kind of like a shadow mat layer as well, if you want to do a simple card like this, which is really nice for when you want those quick and easy cards. And then all we'll have to do is just adhere it to a card base. But instead of just keeping the card base plain, because the colors are pretty close, I want to have a little bit of contrast, so I am going to stamp it. So I inked up this text background, and I'm putting my, col my uh, folded card base right on top. And then I'm just going to put a scrap of paper over that so I can rub over the back. I love to do this for really detailed background stamps and even just background stamps in general because I get a perfect impression every time when I use this technique. And the reason I put the paper down is just in case there's a little bit of that stamp sticking out of the edge, I don't get ink on my hands because if I get ink on my hands, guess what? I get ink where I don't want it on my card. I am a slob and I cannot be pristine. I've got to, I have got to, uh, to do it that way. Now, even with my best attempts, I did not stamp perfectly. You can see I have about an eighth of an inch on the left side there that didn't get hit with ink, but that's no problem. I'm going to use this blending sponge to just kind of very gently rouge the edges of my card so that you don't even know that my background didn't get all the way from side to side. It happens. It's not a big deal. These are the Magic Mushroom Blending Sponges from Local King Rubber Stamp. I have a video from about three years ago when I first got these and I show you a bunch of different techniques you can do with them. I'll try to remember to link that video down below. But Lisa from Local King has much better tutorials on these because she uses them all the time. I've got to be honest, I am not a sponge blender. Um, I am impatient. I find blending with sponges takes a lot, of, a lot of time. I tend to use, actually what I tend to use the most is probably my Judy Kins color dusters, or I just pick up the ink pad and I whisk it across the edges and call it a day. But I didn't want a really grungy edge for this because the focal point is so soft and watercolory looking. I didn't want to have a grungy background that was going to distract from that. So I wanted that softer, more rouged look, and that's why I'm taking a little more time with these blending sponges to get that look. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure I started off using this, this dry, and I realized I really needed to moisten this sponge. It's been a while since I used them, and um, I was kind of rusty with them, to be honest. So I'm just using my fine mist sprayer to spray that and then blot off the extra moisture, and then I'm gonna use that to go back in and finish rouging my edges, and it does work a lot better when you've misted that. Now, these are a little bit more dense and firm than Makeup Beauty Blenders, um, so if you're used to using a beauty blender, just maybe practice with this on a scrap of piece of paper till you're used to that difference in density. I'm looking forward to using these blenders with my pan pastels. I think they're going to be, they're more like the soft tools in density, and I think they're going to work a lot better with my pan pastels for the techniques that I like to do. But, you know, like I was saying before, Use the supplies you like, use the stamps you like, use the methods you like, and that's how you develop your style. There's no point conforming your style into somebody else's techniques that you don't like. Obviously, learn from as many people as you can, but then go back and do what you like doing because that's going to make you happier with your hobby and it's going to make you stick with it. If you're constantly trying, it's like wearing uncomfortable shoes. If you're try constantly trying to fit your feet into some pointy shoes that are too small, you're never going to wear them. You're never going to feel good in them. You want to do the techniques that make you feel good. So I wanted to, I didn't want to throw away that second impression. I wasn't totally happy with it being a focal point, but I thought, you know what? It's soft. It's lovely. It would make a really nice decoration on the inside of this card. So I'm going to cut apart these elements. That's why I said, remember, you could use the, um, you could use any stamps you have and you can just put them around a frame. Remember that one I showed you, Lisa made me, the card Lisa made me? She cut these apart and she used them just like you would regular stamped images. So you know, look at your supplies with new eyes and add to your collection when you find something that would really be beneficial to 
add to your stash and make your other things more versatile. Now, I've always shared the tip in my card making videos to use your pattern paper to make your envelopes and then save the scraps to decorate your cards and then you get a beautifully coordinated piece. And that's what I'm doing here. I've already cut down my pattern paper to make envelopes. I decided I would use that color palette to inspire me to create my cards. And now I'm using one of the cutoff strips from my envelopes to decorate the inside of my cards and it's just perfect. It's not a beautiful sculpt pattern, it's a little too bold to be on the front of my card. It would just totally detract from my stamped image, but using it for the envelope, using it to decorate the inside of my card, it's perfect for that. So keep that balance in mind. Some things are great, some patterns are gorgeous, but they're just too much on the front of your card. But as an accent, they're just ideal, they're just perfect. It's like it's like that perfect red lip or that perfect, um, you know, red belt or flashy earring, you know, it's just, it's just the right spice for your outfit. It's just the right spice for your cards. Now, sometimes I change my mind and I have to peel things up. And sometimes I, I don't show that in the cards, but I think it's important because to show it once in a while. So you see that I don't glue everything down perfectly the first time. Sometimes it changes my mind and that's okay. So when I do something like this, I don't wanna tear the whole panel off because it will warp my card base. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna sneak a little bit of scrap paper underneath there so I can do some stamping and blending and not um, and not get ink where I don't want it. So yeah, this is the sketchy hobo method of card making that I implore with just about every card. And I'm gonna take another scrap and actually tuck it behind that flap so I can um, so I can stamp on that. Cause I was thinking, you know, I really don't want that white. I want to have a little bit of pattern and color there because I love my color. And also because I wanna embellish with those ghost stamped images and I need something dark to make a little contrast because they were so light. So I'm inking up this text stamp. Remember we repeat a theme. And I'm going to stamp over that just like fold up piece there and get a little pattern going on. And it's it's going to um, it's the same pattern we used on our background in the front of the card. So it's going to repeat a image, repeat a theme. And repetition is nice when you use it to decorate the inside of your card. It's not boring. It looks totally coordinated and bespoke and stylish. I'm using some of the green to ink the edges. And you're going to see what's probably the worst inking technique on the Internet but I don't care. I'm going to leave it in because I'm going to make it work. You make it work, people. You make it work. So this is chunky. This is bold. My stamping's a little too dark. I'm not loving it. But then I thought, you know what I could do? I could get my Distress Oxide inks out in a light blue color and I could go over this whole thing and it's going to mute those really dark colors that I don't like. So I'm just going to town with that. I am sponging it on so that I get a bit of a soft look and I can control where it's going and it's gonna be fine. Now, when you use pigment inks with your, any blending sponge, but these in particular, cause they are a little pricey, when you're using pigment ink with a blending sponge, you need to wash the sponge. I'm sorry, it's just gotta be done. And you can use any soap you want. I usually use dish soap cause it's right there at my sink. Um, but yeah, wash them out. If you're gonna use pigment inks, wash them out. Even if you're gonna use pigment inks with your blending brushes, even if you have a dedicated set of blending brushes, you still will need to wash them once in a while because they get kind of clumpy and chunky. They get greasy. Like think of your hair after you put way too many hair products in it. It gets kind of clumpy and gross. Well, your blending brushes will do that. Think of, if you're using pigment, think of it as paint. If you're using pigment or you're using paint, you gotta wash them. You gotta wash your brushes. Same deal with your sponges and pigment inks. Dye inks, you never have to wash them. As long as you don't contaminate them with the wrong color, you're never gonna wash them. But with the pigments, you do. And uh, you know, you're protecting your investment, basically. If you don't care and you wanna buy new blending brushes, blending sponges every six months, then hey, don't wash them. You do you. But uh, I recommend washing them because we don't need to be throwing these things away. They're high quality. We're gonna use them. Heck, I wash my makeup sponges. I don't throw them away. Like after, I wash them every week or two because it's like, I'm not gonna be wasteful. Why be wasteful? Um, I don't think there's a need of it, but hey, I'm not you. I'm not your. I'm not your parent. Do <laughs> whatever you want to do, right? Uh, so now I'm gonna glue these little butterflies, and now they've got enough contrast, and they look really pretty in here. They don't look like they were kind of not stamped so well. And then when I'm gonna glue something down, I put a clear block down to hold it. That way, if any glue seeps down, it will not stick to the block, and it will keep things nice and flat and neat while it glues. And there you have it. One card done. Look at that. We're cooking with grease. We are living our best lives. We're making cards and they're beautiful and they don't take three and a half days. So uh, yay, yay for that.
We're getting our mojo back, friends. We're getting our card making mojo back. For this one, I'm going to use that same that uh, die that coordinates with our hummingbirds, and I'm going to cut it right into my card base. I have a top fold card base. I love to do top fold card bases if I'm doing a window card because then I can run it through my small die cut machine here, which is only six inches wide. Now, I put a couple pieces of cardstock on top of my die for two reasons. For one, it's going to keep the scratches from my very old die cutting plates from leaving impressions on my background. It's also going to give it a little bit more pressure, so I'm sure that I cut all of those little details out of my card. So uh, it's a, it's two purposes. It's being a shim and it's also protecting the smoothness of my cardstock so I can stamp on it or, or do whatever I want and I'm not going to get those little scratches. When you have those little scratches and you try to stamp or color over your cardstock, it shows. So there's a little tip right there for you. I just keep a few pieces of cardstock, just an A2 size, right with my die cutter, and, um, and it's very, very handy. And you can use them over and over again, so don't feel like you have to do a new one every single time. This tool here is a little pokey tool. I get it at the Dollar Tree. You get two in a pack for $1.25. Can't beat it. It works great. Now for this background technique, we're actually going to stamp this twice because I didn't want to have that edge like I did on the last one. Remember, I didn't quite get it out to the edge. So I'm like, well, I'm going to stamp this the other way. And that way I will cover this card. Um, the only downside to this is that you will see a little bit of a seam where they overlap if you don't line them up perfectly. Even if you do line them up perfectly, you still might see that seam. I'm not a fan of the fancy stamp positioners. I, that does not spark joy for me. I want to grab a block or grab a stamp and just do it to it. I am, like I mentioned before, a sketchy hobo and I'm just gonna, I wanna have fun. I wanna do this, I wanna, I wanna do my thing my way. I did it my way. But it's okay because when you're a sketchy hobo like I am, you figure out all kinds of ways to cover your sins and to disguise your mistakes. And that's what I like to show you in my videos. You can watch the other videos, learn how to do it perfectly, or you can watch my videos, learn how to fix your mistakes. I find that's just as educational. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. Now I'm using a blending sponge here, the Magic Mushroom, to just um, soften any harsh edges and also blend out that seam where the two images kind of lined up. Uh, I figured even if there was a seam, it really wasn't going to be a big deal because most of this card front is going to be covered by our focal image. This is just to give it a little bit of texture, give it that hint of sky, because when you have fuchsia, they're usually in hanging baskets, your hummingbirds will, will fly up to them. So I did want a sky background because generally that's what you'd see. You see these birds in the air. And then I'm just adding some wet glue and tapping this right in place. Because these are die cut with a physical die, they will actually nestle right in place, kind of almost like an in inlay, and it's just so pretty. For the window, I want to use vellum, and I'm just using this ancient tone-on-tone uh, -tone vellum. It is, has white ink on white vellum. I have no idea what the brand is because I probably bought it 20 years ago. I just love collecting these lovely little papers and then I bring them out when I feel like they're going to enhance a card. Don't save things for special occasions though. Don't do that. Use it when it fits, right? Don't worry about having the perfect this or that or the most trendy or having something that people can still purchase. The first thing get your card, card, they don't know whether that paper was bought yesterday or 10 years ago. They do not know. It's just like sewing. You can make um, you know, an outfit with pattern with paper uh, with paper. <laughs> you could make art an outfit with paper, I suppose. You can make something with cloth that you bought 20 years ago or yesterday, and most people are not gonna know what was in that quilt. They're just gonna say, wow, that's a gorgeous quilt. So now I am using that scrap of paper. We tore off the insert from the other card and I'm gonna make a little pocket here to put a little light blue card stock in. And there's our beautiful vellum window. It looks really nice on the inside and on the outside because we were very neat and careful when we glued. And uh, yeah, another card down. And this final card is kind of a combination of what we did in the other cards, but I figured out oh, what the heck, it's another idea, right? So this, this image was strong enough to be a card front because we re-inked it with our markers, remember? This time I'm feeling lazy and I'm just gonna stamp this one time. I'm gonna use my technique from the first card where we just put our card base on top of the inked up rubber and we rub over it. And will there be a gap? Will there be an edge that I need to blend in? Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly, that's how I roll. And does it bother me? Not one bit, nope. Because I know that when I send this card to somebody, they're gonna love it. They're gonna know that my friend Lindsay, she ain't perfect, but she cares. And uh, that's what I wanna convey in my cards. And if I wanted a perfect card, I could go to the Dollar Tree and spend a dollar, I could spend get two for a dollar 25 and get a card with no mistakes. I could go to Hallmark if I'm feeling fancy and spend $10 and get a card with no mistakes. But 
I want it to look handmade. I like that look. I think it's nice. I, I think that's why I don't really like the, the whole hot foiling, foiling thing. It's not for me. It's just too perfect looking, you know? But if you like it, then do it. Absolutely. That's, we're all different. We all like different things. I'm doing that same technique on this little mat. Remember each of these little frame stamp dies? They, the, the stamp comes with the die and it also comes with the frame that cuts out around it, the shadow frame. It's all, it's a bundle. I think it's the only way you can get those, uh, that particular stamp. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, gonna do easy peasy on this one. And I think it still looks really pretty. I'm not sure if I like that pattern though. I think it might've looked better if I didn't do that text on the mat, but I also think it's pretty. So I think it looks good either way. It's really up to you and what you like and what you want to do for your card. And I think that's the moral of this story. Do what's right for you. Enjoy your products. Like I said, you can use your nestability dies, any of your frame dies to create your panels or your windows. You can use any of your bird, butterfly, or flower stamps to create these cards. Something similar. It doesn't have to be these products. If you like these products, like I said, I got a 20% off discount code that's good to the end of May if you do want to purchase any of these from local King Rubber Stamps. And uh, if you don't, use your stash. It's totally up to you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gives you a little inspiration on making some cards for some family and friends. And I hope you enjoyed spending a little time with me because I do enjoy spending time with you every day. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!